Hello everyone and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Now a few weeks ago I was invited down to Lexus Guildford to make an in-depth tour on their brand new LT500 Hybrid. Now that video has since done very, very well. So because of the success of that video, I've been asked to come down again to film a more day in the life, uh, living with type video. So I'm going to be showing you my day with an LC500 hybrid and um, what it's like to live with usability, driving quality. So I'm going to be taking the LC500 hybrid that I have up to London. I'll tell you more about the car and more about the plan later. But before I get into the car, there are two things I want to show you. Firstly, but a bit random and not car related, this Lexus showroom has the most stylish and comfortable seats I've ever seen in any car dealership. The second thing is this Solar Flare Orange RCF 300 that's currently for sale. What an incredible color. Anyway, let's get back to the LC500 hybrid. You can find a direct link to the LC500 here. But just in case you weren't sure, here are some key features about the car. The LC500 Hybrid is powered by a front mid-mounted 355 brake horsepower, 3.5 litre petrol V6. Its electric power comes from a potent lithium ion battery, a first for Lexus. These combined power sources come together to produce a sub 5 second 0 to 62 mile per hour time and a limited top speed of 155 miles per hour. As this car is the Sport Plus model, it comes with a rear spoiler, torque vectoring rear diff and four-wheel steering, which leads to very agile cornering and a decreased turning circle, which will be demonstrated later in the video. So this is the key to the car. It's quite a basic key, only uh, three buttons on the back, but it's got an absolutely lovely design and the build quality feels absolutely great. To open the door, simply press the button and the handles stick out. A really nice feature is that they have uh, the Lexus sign. The interior itself, I think, is a massive step up. Lexus interiors have been questionable in the past, but I have to say this is actually a really, really um, nicely upholstered, um, well thought out interior space. So a really nice feature to access the rear compartment. Pull the seats forward and they automatically move. Makes for easy entry and exiting. Um, the space in the rear, as you can see, up, um, upholstered in Alcantara and leather, as this is the, uh, the Sport Plus version. No real room whatsoever. Um, it's probably going to be using the back, probably really for its intended purpose, uh, which is just extra storage essentially. But what I'm going to do is, I've, one of my friends has helped me film this video, so I'm going, to ask, I'm going to call him over. I'm going to get him to sit in the back of the car and show you really how much the space is limited. Okay, so how tall are you, do you think? That's six, six foot. Six foot, okay, so if you get in the back, well, we can, uh, we can, we can test out, yeah, there's just a little flap at the back there. So, six foot guy, 183 centimeters, if you don't understand Imperial. So if you try and pop yourself in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much the only issue with the car. I mean, how does that feel to you? <laughs> so even with the seat forward, it's just a case of headroom. <laughs> That's absolutely, just, that's just obnoxious to be honest, that horn. Uncalled for. But, um, so yeah, so you can't even extend your head. That's just... That's, no, it's not good. It's good if you want to check your phone, that's about it. Good thing the car is really easy to get into. I actually think I'm going to open the door really briefly and show you the controls for the seats. Oh, if the door doesn't slide back. So on the side, we have con um, these control back and forward tilt motion. That's about it. This one is to move the seat forward or to move the seat backward. And then it's got a little one on the side. Uh, rest of the interior space, really, really nice. And like I said before, this is the Sport Plus mode version. So we've got leather up the top, Alcantara. This, I think, what I imagine could be aluminium handle. Either way, I really love the way it's fashioned. Seat memory controls down here. Uh, usual things, so we've got um, electric windows, lock, unlock, and um, controls for the electric mirrors as well. Small storage space at the bottom of the door, and actually I have to say, a really, really nice carbon fibre sill area. I think we're almost ready to start off our journey. So foot on the brake, and there's a little power on button here. Everything gets into gear. And believe it or not, because this is a, a three and a half litre V6 hybrid, the car is actually on now, which is pretty crazy. Um, what's my driving position like? It's not too bad. I need to adjust the mirrors. So what I have to do is press right, and then I can just adjust the mirrors accordingly. 
Okay. Got like that. And then simply have to press left for the last one, obviously. And I can just adjust that one too. Um, I imagine that button is for auto closing. Let's just test it out. So that function's gonna come in pretty handy later. Little functions here. Imagine that's for the fuel cap, for the boot, and for the HUD. I probably won't be using that because for some reason I get really, really nauseated when using the HUD. Uh, when using the HUD. Nice controls. The thing I like about this, it's inspired from the LFA, so the centre dial actually moves back when you move the car into sport mode, which you can do using the little dial over to the side. And I imagine traction controls um, over on this side. Nice big screen, which is controlled through all the centre column. Nicely upholstered gear stick here for the 10-speed automatic gearbox. It's one of the first of its kind. I imagine this, the sat-nav is probably pretty easy to set up, but just for convenience's sake, I'm actually going to use Waze on my phone because I just think that'll be easier. So moving to the rearview mirror, I actually personally love this rearview mirror. It's seamless. It's sort of um, edgeless. It's one of the, the only ones that's truly edgeless. I imagine it's auto-dimming as well, just make sure that we have the best visibility possible. The actual windscreen itself, is quite narrow. I'd say visibility is quite good, but it, the the top um, section, the panel over here, it runs down quite far, so I feel that is sort of in the way a bit. So one other thing I've just realised is, at the moment, my view, this is my view, it's a little bit uh, sort of muted, I can't really see the top of the display panel. So I was just looking around to see, and you adjust the um, steering column using this little button over here, electrically adjustable, forward, backwards, up and down. So actually, exceptionally easy to adjust. There we go, that's much better. Bring it forward a little bit, perfect. We're finally ready to go. So um, what I'm going to do now is put the car into drive. Um, so simply just turn it over to the right and then it's in neutral. I can put it up for reverse or down into drive. Believe it or not, the car is actually on already. Um, it's amazingly silent because it's a hybrid. So into drive, simply just release. It's got a little creep function. And then there we go, silently away. Okay, so let me introduce the actual concept behind today, what we're actually going to do. How am I going to test this car in a real-world real setting? You may not be English watching this video, in which case I need to do a bit of explaining. Now, in the UK, we have a food stuff. It's called a scotch egg. So essentially, imagine a boiled egg, and then you get meat from, like, this inside of a sausage normally. You put it around the egg, you put breadcrumbs around that, which probably has some sort of egg yolk to stick it together. And then you probably bake it or, or, or something like that. And it's absolutely delicious. Now you can buy these in supermarkets. They're very easily attainable, but they're dry and they're disgusting. So there's a place in London, which you may have heard of, called Fortnum and Mason. They're very famous. They've been going since about the 18th century. And they're probably most notable for providing the queen with all of her um, weekly shopping. So what I'm doing today is I'm taking the LC500 hybrid up to London, which is about 30 miles or around maybe an hour from where we are now. Lots of different road types, lots of different driving conditions. And on the voyage to get the most delicious scotch egg I can find, I'm going to put the car through its paces. After leaving the dealership, we very briefly drove along some country roads before joining the motorway. I'll go into more detail about how the LC500 Hybrid handles this environment later in the video. So now we're doing some motorway driving. We've been on here for probably about 10 minutes now, so obviously don't have a really in-depth view of it. We're in comfort mode so far. Once again, it's exactly the same as it was on the country roads. It feels extremely smooth. Um, it's handling the speed very, very well. Altogether, this is a very comfortable car. I mean, this is built to be a, a sporty, luxurious GT. And from what I can see, of course, I haven't really put it through its paces on some proper roads, but on the country roads we're on back there, and now on the motorway here, it's just, it fits its role so perfectly. Like I said, the seat's comfortable. We're cruising comfortably at, you know, the speed limit. The car feels very, comfortable at this speed limit, uh, there's a little trailer up ahead. So what I'm going to do is I'll give you an example of how well this car overtakes. So we're just in comfort mode. Uh, I need to wait obviously for the traffic to die down on my right side so I can get past. But I'll show you the ease at which this car goes through. So we're going to indicate and then check. So we're in comfort. 
just a little, probably about, I don't know, 50% throttle maybe, just to get the car going. And then look, easy, straight past. Available power when you need it. So the two things I found most impressive about this so far, one is the sound insulating. I'm not sure if you can tell quite how quiet it is in here. I mean, we're, we're motorway driving. It's quite a big engine up, up front. We're going at the speed limit. And it's exceptionally quiet. Really, really, really is quiet. There's nothing else going on. And the second thing to add to that is because this is a hybrid powertrain, the car is very, very quiet until you put your foot down. So it's a very relaxed experience. As our journey progresses, when we move closer and closer into London, we get more confined in our space, and it's given me a good opportunity to test out the visibility. So, so far what I can conclude is that the mirrors, the exterior mirrors, being quite large, mean that I can position the car quite easily. I, can, I feel like I can see where the car is in the lane, I can see where the additional vehicles are, and on the edge there are some proximity sensors as well, uh, which is really useful. The main mirror in the centre, the rear view mirror, uh, is quite large, it's auto dimming. Uh, so generally, despite this top bit being quite sort of low, the exterior visibility of the car, I would say, is pretty good. You feel like you can uh, place the car in lane very easily. So we've reached Greater London. If you are unfamiliar, with the uh, area, it's sort of just surrounding central London, unsurprisingly. Um, now we're getting into real city driving, so we've even got some sort of speed bumps to contend with as well, which the car is actually dealing with really well. So as I was saying before, it has a very, very smooth ride, and that's most notable over these speed bumps. It feels very, very relaxed, not jarring at all, After spending some time admiring the car's reflection, we headed down the home of the UK supercar scene, the legendary Sloan Street, and unsurprisingly, we came across some car spotters. As we slowly drove past, they simply had to tear themselves away from the Aventador SV they were photographing, and instead get the Lexus. Right, we've finally made it into central London. We've just gone past Harrods. There weren't exactly a lot of people there, so now we're going to head to uh, St. James's Square, when we can test the parking ability of the LC500 hybrid. And also we can finally go and get the delicious treats I was talking about earlier in the video. A um, Couple of people having a little look. It's pretty interesting to see their reactions. I found to put the wing up, you have to be stationary with your foot on the brake, and then you can manually put the wing up. Personally, I think it looks really, really, really good with the wing up. On Sloan Street, there are lots of buildings with glass uh, fascias and frontiers and things. And the reflection of the car going across the window is amazing. It looks so futuristic. It, it looks like a concept car. It sort of doesn't look like a normal road car. So now we can also test the car's start-stop sort of capability, um, start-stop driving as well. Now we're driving sort of into Mayfair direction. Um, lots of stopping, starting, stopping, starting. Good thing about the gearbox, it's nice and smooth. So it sort of feels sort of seamlessly uh, transitions through the gears. Despite the fact that London has notoriously terrible roads. <laughs> so you hear that? Even my glamorous assistant is comfortable, despite notoriously terrible roads in London. The, the car has a creep function, like most um, automatic cars. So when you release the brake, the car creeps forward very, very slowly. Then you can very easily engage the uh, accelerator pedal. Um, and, and more, it's a very, it's not a jerky type of acceleration, so it's, you don't feel it in sort of steps, it's very, very smooth, uh, which makes this sort of, this sort of um, communication, communication through traffic very easy. The brake itself, there is a regenerative braking function. Um, I think you can sort of feel that a bit, which is why depressing it can feel a little bit. There's a bit more different type of resistance than in other cars that I felt, but um, it's very, very smooth, just as the accelerator. You don't have to depress that harshly really. It's sort of a very smooth, understandable reaction. Right, 
So the next challenge is to park this thing. I finally found a space. See how easy it is to park. Right, we do have a reversing camera. Quite close on that side, I have to say. We're a little bit close on that side, so I just want to move it forward a little bit. Okay, there we go. Done, parked. So the, the wing mirrors actually tilt and change uh, when the car's going into reverse and stuff, which is a really useful function. Right, so we've just parked the car, as you saw. Um, it was made very easy for two main factors. First of all, the folding wing mirrors. They didn't just fold in, but they actually folded down. So I had better visibility of curves, of lines, different things like that. The second thing was the large reversing camera screen. So of course the screen doesn't actually change, but one of the, the good feature is that the reversing camera itself fills up the entire screen with um, little lines that bend round. I understand it's a common feature, but I found it very, very useful. Um, anyway, so now parked up, we're both starving because it's lunchtime, as you can see by everyone queuing up for their lunch. And we're heading over to Portland Mason to grab the tasty treats I told you about earlier. way to achieve. Are you excited, Jim? I'm very excited. Are you excited for a scotch egg? I love a scotch egg. going to have a scotch egg. Thank you very much. Cheers. Mission accomplished. We've come all this way, spent all this money, and we have the four scotch eggs. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. It's amazing. I cannot wait to dive straight into one. Treat in hand. This is actually makes a good test to uh, see the boot space. Now in the hybrid there's 172 litres of boot space. It's not a huge amount. It's actually down, because of the hybrid drive system, it's down 20 litres on the V8. So if you come in and take a closer look, have a look in, inside. So we've just got some like generic camera equipment in here that we had um, in the car. Obviously this isn't going to take up much room. But I mean you could probably fit some um, Small bags in there if you're going, you could probably fit a small family shop as well. So really, it's a fairly usable car. With our valuable cargo now on board, it was time to head out of London and back to the relative tranquility of the countryside. However, there were some important tests still to undertake. Basically the entire time we've been in the car, we've been utilising comfort mode, but the car does have multiple drive modes. It has Eco, Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus. Each of these, as with other drive modes in other cars, they become gradually more aggressive as you go up. In comfort, as we're in now, it's a very, very relaxed driving dynamic. So there's probably slower gear changes. The steering column is very soft and smooth, and so is the suspension. As you progress through the driving modes from eco, normal, sport to sport plus, the car will become more stiff, the suspension will become more rigid, uh, the steering feel will become a lot harder as well, and the 
uh, the car will accelerate faster. We can experiment with these modes a little bit later, probably when we end up hitting more sort of open road because there's obviously a lot going on at the moment. It's harder to really embrace it. One other thing that I can mention is that there are three different ways to change gear in this car. So firstly, you can just leave the car in automatic mode. In standard auto mode, you can let the car do all of the changes itself. The 10 speed automatic gearbox is very, very smooth. You can kind of tell when it's changing gear, but it's not a jerky or jolting sensation. You can also change gear using the paddles behind the wheel. Um, haven't experimented with that yet, but we will do. You can, and you can put the actual drive selector centrally into manual mode and then sort of sequentially push down for down gear or push up for up. I think we should also experience that later in the video. So now we're on the motorway, I think it's time to test out how responsive and slick the manual shifting capabilities of this car are. So first of all, we're going to shift down using the paddles. First of all, I have to say the paddles are really nice. I imagine they're milled from aluminium or something, they feel very smooth. And they're quite large as well. You, if you're holding the top at sort of the 10 and 2 position, or the bottom of the steering wheel, you'll still be able to um, access them. So if we move down, it's pretty much instantaneous. If you look at the number on the dash, it changes over very, very quickly and it just takes over, going back into uh, auto mode. It's not a particularly hot day. The uh, thermometer outside is saying it's about 24 degrees. For some reason, this car, it seems to be like a heat sink. It gets so incredibly hot in here with the windows up. But there's a really, really good aircon system where the vents have quite uh, wide uh, divisions between each slat. Um, and it's literally ice cold, it's on low at the moment. So there's uh, one in the middle, sort of on the center, center column. There's one over here for me. And then there's two on the passenger side. Uh, they seem to be pretty effective. So I mean, cooling isn't a problem whatsoever, even on like a, a really, a fairly sort of mild day for the UK um, in sort of stop start traffic on a main motorway. So as well as adjusting the air conditioning, which is done on the controls along here, which is actually fairly easy to use. You may also want to change the settings on the main display, uh, you know, to change radio station or to change the direction of travel, you know, etc., etc. This can all be done on the main um, touch interface down here. If you have bottles and different things, it can be quite difficult to access. Um, and because it's it's quite an independent individual system, not many have a system that's quite like that. It takes a bit of getting used to. I mean, this is obviously the first day I've actually had time with the car, and. You know, having to take my eyes off the screen for quite a while to navigate to where I want to using the touchpad is a little bit distracting, in my opinion, and probably take a bit of time getting used to. Of course, you can use the direct um, select buttons ahead, so I can just press that and it goes straight to radio, press that and it goes straight to media, um, or I can go to map, for example. So, I mean, that isn't too bad. That's quite easy in itself. I mean, any system can be quite difficult to get, get to used to if, you, if you're like in a brand new car that you have no idea of how to use properly. But I suppose the real question is, is the user interface in this car and the controls down there, is it particularly difficult to use? Is it user friendly? I would have to say it's fairly complicated, but it's less complicated than older Lexus that I've, that I've used. It's more straightforward to use, um, and they've changed the system from having the the sort of mouse cursor type thing that you could move around, like in the RX450. It's moved back to the trackpad in this car, which is simple, we just sort of graze over it and then a double tap to select. So overall, because it's um, a different type of system that I'm, I'm quite used to, yes, it will probably take some time to get, you know, to get used to, but overall, I don't think it's um, a particularly difficult system to use. As I approach the end of my day with the LC500 Hybrid, what are three main things I can say about it? Well, the first is that it's like the, with the RX450 Hybrid I drove a few months ago, its ride is exceptionally smooth. It's very, very easy to drive. I've actually had a really, really great time in it. The second point I want to raise is that the powertrain is very subtle, but it has power when you need it. So we're just cruising around right now at speed limit, and it's very easy to just sort of to do that. But if I need to maneuver into a different lane or if I need to make an overtake, the car has the punch to be able to 
provide that in a very smooth, effect effective manner. But the power doesn't feel overwhelming. So once again, that ties into the first point of this being very easy to drive. The third thing is how well everything is built. I love the style of everything, the door handles, the Alcantara, uh, the wheel itself is very nice, and especially the outside. What the amount of looks we got in London proves is that the guys at Lexus have done very, very well to bring a car so close to a concept car into reality. So after all of that madness in London, I think it's time for a little bit of a break. So we've pulled up by one of my favorite spots. People who watch my content regularly may have seen this before. I just want to highlight just a couple things about the LC now that the sun has, is out. Well, it, it was out. First of all is the paint. Um, this has actually got a pearlescent paint. There are a couple of different types, but now the sort of sun's out, I really hope that you can see all the different, the pearlescent nature of the paint coming out. I think it's beautiful. The second is that this actually has a carbon fiber roof because this is a, the sport version. I imagine that does actively help to decrease the car's center of gravity, but it also looks great. So another way the weight is kept down in this car other than the carbon roof is that a lot of carbon fiber is used. So that you've got a lot of carbon fiber here in its sort of raw form. It feels pretty nice. It's not just a panel bolted on, but um, it means that the, the doors are actually pretty easy to open and close. And I like the, um, the mechanism on them that you can really snap it into place quite easily. And they're not hard to open despite actually being quite long. Like I was saying before, there's a central column in the middle. If you push this down and pull it back, you can access so like a drinks holder and maybe something for your phone or the key. There's a little bit to the side here. If you pull that up and pull it around, there's a little storage space in the middle. So if you get a little clip of that. I had, this is a glasses case for like a normal pair of Ray-Bans. That's the size. You've also got USB, um, aux auxiliary, and uh, the 12 volt socket as well. So that's in there. And then if we come around to the front over here, there's also the glove compartment. So you open it, pressing a little button on top. I have to say it's pretty bad storage space. I mean, and that's it. I mean, there is a book in there as well, but if we look inside, there's not a huge amount of space. I think that's probably because of the way they've designed the uh, air vents up the top here, this little leather panel. There's this little space at the front here. So you can keep the key there. Usually it resides under this little pop, so you just pop that open and then bam, you just put your little glass bottle or the key or anything in there. And um, yeah, from the inside, that's, that's pretty much it. So a round trip to London just to get the little things in this box. I think it's probably about time that we had a look and had one. So if you come closer, take a little look. These little things here are uh, scotch eggs. So we've got the breadcrumb around the edges with the sausage meat and then a boiled egg on the inside. Now some of you may think that sounds absolutely disgusting. Maybe I'm a disgusting person, but I'm an, I'm an English man all the way to my heart. This is English food, so I'm looking forward to getting stuck in. This is the inside of a Scotch egg. We traveled so far for these, so I thought I'd show you. Red crumbs, the meat, and the egg itself. This thing is absolutely delicious, and especially from Fortnum & Mason. It's moist, it's juicy. This is not an advert or a paid placement or anything. I just absolutely love these. With my Scotch egg now finished, I think it's unfortunately time to hand the car back, which means getting in it and have one, one final drive back to Lexus Guildford. Start the car up, it's time to go. Oh, I have to say this is a genuinely special car. And I know I don't have a huge amount of experience testing cars and any car that I really go in that's a bit different is going to probably make me feel very excited. And that's probably an issue from a lack of experience, but I genuinely, genuinely really like this car. And it's a shame that I have to give it back. Before we go, I'm just going to show you the turning circle. I'm actually genuinely impressed with the turning circle. This Lexus feels exceptionally maneuverable. It feels very agile and it, it, it does its job perfectly. It's a GT, it, 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 it is a GT. 
that's what it is. It's quintessentially a GT. So what did that spirited countryside road driving in Sport Plus mode tell me about the car? Well, it told me that it's very well balanced, very good traction. The, everything tightens up, but not too much. It doesn't lose the GT feel, but it did actually sort of confuse the gearbox. It was sort of getting confused whether it should change up or change down. Um, for that type of driving, I'd probably say using the paddles or the manual sort of sequential shift would be more appropriate. Um, but other than that, the car felt very stable and the traction felt good and the uh, accelerator and brake both felt very responsive. Ah, oh, back to Lexus Guildford. I brought the car back to its home and I don't want to give it back, in all honesty. I really don't want to give the car back. But I suppose they were good enough to give it to me. So I have to press park for the last time down here and then uh, turn it off with this and then say goodbye to the Lexus LC500 Hybrid. The day is finished, our adventure with the LC500, and I'm actually pretty upset, to be honest. It's experiences like this that make me remember why I'm a car person and why I try to make the best videos I can, so hopefully you can have an insight into something like this as well. Um, to experience this car, I mean, a lot of people, to be honest, let's, let's face it, a lot of people don't rate Lexus. And hopefully by showing you this content, I can prove that you really, really should. And opinion needs to change because they're producing products like this. So I have to close the door for one final time, even though that's the passenger door. And I actually have to say a humongous thank you to Lexus Guildford, you can see behind me there, for giving me this opportunity. I was actually one of the first people to film this car um, in detail with my in-depth video, which of course I'll leave a link to above. Um, and now I've been one of the first people to have a proper drive in one on the road. So I feel incredibly lucky. So thank you again to them. I'll leave all of their contact details in the description of the video. So make sure you go and check them out. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it really gave you an insight into what it's like to run one of these for a day. So please subscribe for the latest content from my channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.